Um, I'm going to share with you today just some stories of our experiences at, at the White House and uh, it was a very unique time because our, our family was never supposed to be there. Uh, I mean if you grew up a son or daughter of the, the Reagans or the Bushes or but, you know you could almost predict that your father was going to run for president and maybe become president but Gerald Ford I don't think anybody thought Gerald Ford was ever going to be president someday so uh, before I get started, first of all, thank you for having me, and it's an honor to be here. Dad loved uh, loved coming back and participating locally. The Grand Rapids and Grand Valley, and uh, this was a he just he had a heart for this place. This is where he grew up, and uh, our family owes Grand Rapids particularly uh, a lot for giving Dad a, a a wonderful place to grow up as a young man and the state of Michigan and you know it was just a great place to to find those values integrity character leadership values and uh, Grand Rapids is an all-american city that provides that for young people particularly when dad was growing up so uh, we owe a lot to this area and, and dad loved Grand Valley so thanks thanks for having me thanks for having me um, you know I, I met with a couple of students back here and and when I was coming in, somebody asked me, now with a new um, administration, you know, do you get invited back to the White House and stuff like that? It, you know, it's a small club who's lived there. And, and, and my comment was, well, you know, when, when Dad was there, the key turned to kind of to the right, and now it kind of goes to the left. So our key doesn't really work anymore. But um, I, the last time, and, and Marty, you were there. Last time, last time I was at the White House um, was when we had Dad's 90th birthday, which would have been what five years ago, five year, whatever, in the summertime. Uh, it was a couple, two or three years before he passed away. And President Bush was kind enough to invite my dad back to the White House, our whole family, to celebrate dad's 90th birthday. And it was almost to the day that he had been sworn in as President of the United States 30 years earlier. So, I, and I hadn't been to the White House, Marty, in probably 20 years, I bet you. And so uh, the President, President Bush, was kind enough. He, uh, they were going to have a little reception for us on the family quarters, and then we had dinner that night. But he took us over to the Oval Office, and I walked in and I thought about it. I thought, my gosh, I, you know, first of all, I haven't been here in 20 years, but I was an 18-year-old kid when Dad became president. And I'm walking in the Oval Office thinking, how did I ever, you know, become part of this? And I'm looking around to see if it's all the same. It looks the same. Then we go up to a small reception on the second floor of the White House uh, before we go down to dinner, and. Uh, I'm wandering around thinking this, you know, this was the family quarters, this is where we lived. And, and again, even though I lived there, I'm thinking it, it, it was just surreal that, that our family got catapulted into the White House. And I walk out, there's a screen door that leads out onto the um, a balcony. I think it's a Truman balcony. It looks over the south lawn of the White House. And um, I walk through that screen door and I look over and to my left in a perfect line, okay, is Vice President Dick Cheney. Former Secretary of State Colin Powell, Secretary of Defense Don Rumsfeld, and the Chairman of the Federal Reserve Alan Greenspan, and then me, and we're standing in this perfect line. And in my head, I'm going, I, it, "This doesn't make sense." And and it's like one of those pictures, you know, like what doesn't belong here? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I I asked Alan Greenspan to leave, and uh, no, no, no. no. Um, but we went down to dinner. We had a wonderful dinner, and. Um, so I, that was the last time I'd been back to the White House. So this is, um, it's, not, it's not a club that you get invited every week. And we were very blessed to go through it in 1974. And I want to share a few of those, those stories with you of how, how we got back there and how our family became one of the, uh, I mean, you think about it, it's so unique. You know, Dad, really, the, the first man that became president of the United States that didn't didn't go through an election. He was appointed vice president, assumed the presidency after um, Nixon resigned. That, that probably will never happen again in the history of this country. Um, let me give you just a, before I get started here, a little, little ba I'll give you a little background of what I do today besides acting. I do, as Marty said, a lot of corporate events and things like that. But I went, and I think it relates to what 
This is about leadership and character. I, I went through a huge change myself about nine years ago. And I had three people, three very special people, about nine years ago stand in front of me and challenge me. And they said, Steve, we, lo you know, we love the movies you work on, we love the TV shows, all those kind of things. But we challenge you to step away from your acting career and do something different. To, to be of service, to add more value to your life. And th those three people, they did, nine years ago, challenged me. And I listened to them, and I did. I walked away from my acting career for about two or three years to go be of service, as they called it. And <clears throat> gave up income, all those kind of things. And, and that was easy to do. I didn't have a family to support. So that was an you know, easier decision for me than most. But I took off and took two or three years and I started traveling around speaking to high school kids, middle school kids, uh, college kids about drugs and alcohol because of what the Ford family had gone through, gosh, you know, 25 years earlier when my mother, former first lady, raised her hand, said, my name is Betty, I'm an alcoholic. And uh, that changed the face of alcoholism in this country back in the late 70s. And you would think Betty Ford's son would know better, but 15 years ago, I too had to raise my hand and, and say, my name is Steve, I'm an alcoholic. And, and that's how sneaky a disease it is. And I should have known better. I mean, my mo mother was Betty Ford. And, and um, so I and actually to let you know, our family's just like everybody else's. When I went to my mother 15 years ago and told her, I think I'm an alcoholic. She was just like every other mother in this country. And I remember going and saying, Mom, you know, I, I think I'm an alcoholic. And, and, and she, was, she said, no, my son can't be an alcoholic. You can't be an alcoholic. I said, Mom, wait a second. You, you can't be in denial. You're like Betty Ford, you know. You're, you're, you're the poster child for this thing, you know. And she was just like every other mother. So we're, we're all the same. So, but I stand here so, sober today, 15 years of sobriety. Um, due to mom's leadership, the, the, the grace of God, and a, a good 12-step program. That uh, So I, I was able to take my failure at that time and uh, what I learned from that to get sober and go speak to high school kids, middle school kids for about two and a half, three years. Spoke to about 65,000 of them to be of service, to add more value to my life 